All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here, talking about real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. Music segregation is truly a thing in the year 2021. Uh, I've done videos where I've been a bit of a curmudgeon about today's music, and I, I still am. Uh, by the way, um, I'm going to use a reference point here. Go check out Rick Beato's new video where he talks about how auto-tune is killing the music industry. Although Rick, slight edit to that or opinion that I have here. They don't care, Rick. They don't care. You and I care because we're old geezers, right? We care because we grew up with the greatest music in history. And we're seeing that music. It's like sand slipping through your fingers. Journey comes out with a new song today. And I'm thinking to myself, why doesn't that get on mainstream rock radio? It's Journey, the band with the most downloaded song in the history of downloading, right? So they... They adjusted to the modern era. They're not selling albums anymore. I mean, sure they are, but uh, they're not selling that much physical product, but they're, they're selling electronic downloads. Uh, and they've sold more Don't Stop Believing than any band has sold their version of uh, their biggest song. You know, And it's just tragic, though, to think that a whole generation of people have been fed in more than a generation now, for the last 30 years at least, it's all been force-fed, dark side, brooding, negative, doom. I mean, the term doom rock, when that came around, I was like, yeah, that's what we need more. And I get it. Some people like the genre, right? Like speed metal. Could never get into speed metal, but some people like the genre. All right? But this is beyond that now, because now we've got one brand of music and that's it. Now there are a couple of exceptions. Greta Van Fleet gets on the radio. Dirty Honey gets on the radio. Almost like the token melodic bands, you know, that have the right image. They're not too old. You know, Don Henley says, you know, this could be ageism. And yeah, it could be ageism. I don't know. I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous. If it's good music, it's good music. I don't care if a 90 year old guy or gal sat down and put something great out there and people said, wow, this is good, but they're 90, so I'm not gonna listen to this. I mean, that's that's ageism, all right? And I understand that image is really important because image, you know, like look at Kiss. I did a video about Kiss the other day. It's, look, I, I'm a fan of Kiss, but uh, they were more about image than anything else. And um, their catalog is good but it doesn't compare to other bands. It doesn't compare to a band like Journey. It doesn't compare to a band like REO Speedwagon or Foreigner or Styx. You can go down a list of bands that didn't rely on image. They relied on their great music in order to make an impact. And yeah, do they have an image? Do they have a persona? Yeah, to some degree. Um, but we've got lead singers today that all sound the same. For the most part, they all sound the same. And most of them are using auto-tune, as Rick Beato points out. Of course, Rick is talking more about the pop stuff and that electronic noise that you hear when you walk into a, a, a clothing store in a mall somewhere and you're like, oh my gosh, get me out of here. It's almost like the people who grew up with real music are really overly sensitive to this noise because I see the same reactions in the people that are my age or a little younger, a little bit older, whatever, they're like, what is this crap they're playing through the speakers? You know, you walk into the gap or whatever store it is, and you're just like, no, I, number one, you feel like I shouldn't be in this store. I shouldn't be in this store. This store is not for me, right? And they're telling you through the music that the store is not for you. This is what I mean by music segregation. And there may be a few younger people who, haven't bought into the musical Kool-Aid, you know, and listen to it and go, this is horrible. I mean, I see comments on YouTube, or I used to see them when YouTube had just general comments that you could leave on individual songs. People would say things like, man, I grew up at the wrong time. This music is so much better than the crap they're making today. And you get younger people. I got a son who said to me, hey, dad, 
what's wrong with Steven Tyler? What's wrong with his voice? I go, what do you mean? I mean, it's so hoarse. It's so like he does that screeching thing and then he just sounds crazy. And I go, you know what, son? That's not auto-tune. That's somebody with a distinctive voice, whether it's Steven Tyler or Lou Graham or Jimmy Jameson or Steve Perry. You can go down the list. These guys had to be able to sing. They didn't have gimmicks. They didn't have technology that could fix them. And I don't want them fixed, by the way. I want them full strength, natural, imperfections, all of it. Because imperfections, that's humanity. When we get to a place of you know, perfection, then that's artificial intelligence and that's not real singing as far as I'm concerned. Um, but getting back to the segregation part of this, which I believe is very important, uh, a whole generation plus have missed out on tons of music that you and I go searching for. People like us, we go and we have to go rummaging through the internet like it's a trash can. We got to look and blah. And, and the more stuff that gets uploaded, the harder it is to find stuff. I found this band yesterday called Page 99. All right. So if you like Toto, Steely Dan, um, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, what we call West Coast or Yacht Rock. I mean, this group is fantastic. Are they on a contemporary station near you? Of course not. Of course not. The programming is completely unimaginative and it all comes down. This is the thing that people have to understand. You know how like six major corporations control the media? Well, I think it's like three that control the radio broadcasting industry. And I think it gets smaller and smaller. I think there were five. Now there are three. I might be wrong about these numbers. So again, I'm giving you a general overview of what's been ha happening at, uh, you know, music or at radio for the past 20 years that it just gets condensed. And so everything comes down from the corporation and right to your local station. The level of syndicated nonsense shows about, you know, vitamins that are music shows, whether you like John Tesh or not. I mean, and all the music is just thrown in there as decoration. There's no DJ telling you what you just heard, where this band might be showing up near you if they're still around or the history of the group or whatever. There are no, you're better off like, and this is why a lot of people say to me, just go to Spotify. You do a Spotify list now and they'll actually list out while the song is playing, they'll tell you the history of the band, um, useless information that only geeks would want to know about the, the group and stuff. The stuff DJs used to do. But again, the humanity of all of this is being turned down. It's being turned off. And what's scary is nobody seems to care. So my argument back to Rick Beato, and he's correct about the auto-tune destroying everything, is that, Rick, they don't care. They don't know and they don't care. They're ignorant. They're, they're oblivious. Um, you know, you could shake them and say, here, I'm going to make you listen to, you know, Dream On by Aerosmith, whatever song. <laughs> And they're going to go, oh, no, that guy's like, what's wrong with his voice? See, they've all been conditioned. I just think I'm just I'm talking about one area, which is mainstream rock and how unimaginative and how boring and how dark and how everything just to me blends and sounds the same. I don't want to hear Metallica's Black Album anymore on the radio. OK, there are certain acceptable things that they continue to play. That's a good album, but I don't want to hear that because that's their high point and that mixes well with all of the other stuff they play. It's better than the newer stuff they're playing, but it's almost as if if it's dark and negative and brooding and angry, then that fits what we want to project into the world today. And after what we've been through the last year and a half, um, People do not need darkness. They need the light. They need hope. They need optimism. They need a sunny song to come on the radio. Seriously. I mean, we've got a whole generation of younger people that don't get that, that don't hear that. Yeah, they're pop stations. Some of it is, you know, upbeat and not negative, but 
the subject matter of some of these songs, and I'm not trying to sound like the old guy in the front lawn, because again, I grew up with a lot of innuendo, but you kind of, you just, you laughed at it and you knew what it was and you, you accepted it. And it wasn't in every song. And when it was there, we all kind of chuckled a little bit and turned red and said, hey, that's, uh, we know what we're, we know what they're talking about there, you know, but it, now everything is so overt and in your face and that, that is a big turnoff as well for a lot of people say over 50. But in any event, um, music segregation is a bad thing. It is a really bad thing. These songs can coexist. The new Journey song can coexist next to the new song by Five Finger Death Punch. It, it could. And if people are so more open-minded today than they were, you know, 40, 50 years ago, then they would accept all of this music. And the programmers should be less into segregation. And a whole record label in Italy would be the most popular, Frontiers music would be the most popular thing again, um, as far as being the, uh, I don't know, the marketer of music that's upbeat and positive and doesn't sound like everything else. I think a record label like that, I think there are other record labels here in the United States that would sign bands that don't sound like crap and they would be able to market them and play them. But right now they can only sign bands that sound uh, a certain way. When Dirty Honey appeared on the scene, they didn't even have a record label. And yeah, there was a desire for what they were doing because the first single they released went to number one and they didn't have a record label. So don't tell me this stuff wouldn't fly on mainstream rock stations because all it needs is to see a little bit of airplay and then people will go, huh, what's that? That's different. Like we used to in the old days, we used to say, oh, that, that's cool. That's different. Wonder what that is. So I wanted to address music segregation. It's a bad thing. Uh, the music industry is further fragmenting and segregating music. And in the old days, the top 40, like go back to 1980 and look at what was on the top 40. Country, R&B, pop, rock jazzy tunes like George Benson, things like that, all on the top 40, all living happily next to one another, nobody complaining, nobody upset, nobody wishing something else was on there because it was, it was in each genre, everything was represented and it had one or two roots somewhat planted in rock and roll or at least in melodic music. And I think what we have, have today is almost the opposite of that. So, all right, long-winded. I don't know if that made any sense, but uh, there you go. Thanks for watching.